special Ghostwood. Uh, I'm Charles Skaggs, as you might know, and uh, with me as always is Zen Sprouse. I am Zen Sprouse. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. Charles. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Ghostwood, as I slip into sort of a lame British accent. A lame British accent. Yes. This is This is the yes. proper... Yes. As I, Full afternoon tea version of... As I tried to do David Frost. <laughs> <laughs> or something to that effect. So, yes. So, does that uh, mean I'm Nixon in this scenario? No, 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 no. That's me Nixon? No, 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 because I'm not going to interview you and, and totally dissect you in front of national television. That's but, good. Uh, yeah, so that's not good. And uh, I am nowhere near interesting enough for that. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, apparently you are because yeah. Apparently because of you, we had now have ten new followers on our Facebook page. Fantastic! Just for you, just see. Every time you mention it, we get a bunch of new followers. So that's, that's awesome thanks, when you do everybody. that. So yeah, thanks everybody. While I'm thinking about it, so uh, well, th- let me let me explain what the uh, impetus for that was. Yeah, please do. Uh, my friend Lauren who I know from childhood is Lori, but she's an adult now. So she goes by Lauren. Yeah. Got to be more sophisticated. Met Michael horse. Oh, deputy. Yeah. Hawk, Deputy chief. Uh-huh. Hawk. Yes. Deputy chief Hawk. Got to remember you so, got promoted. So she got, she got to meet Michael horse. And so I wrote something on the comment on her photo. And, um, she said that, uh, she was thinking of me about that. And I said, well, then, you know, now that there's no more, now that there are no more episodes, you should listen to my podcast. And she's like, "You have a podcast?" So, and yeah. then a couple, it's like, people, "Thanks for thanks for following my feed." You I... have a podcast? <laughs> well, here's what I think. Here's what I think happened is I think that when we first announced this podcast, yeah, people were thinking, "I don't want to. I don't want to talk about the new. I want to watch the see. I want to watch the new season first. Okay. And then, and and now that it's over, right? I think we're all just Give me something, Twin Peaks. Just anything. Right. Now that now the withdrawal is setting in. Now that the withdrawal is setting in. Yes, yes. you give them that little feel. taste, and they want to keep going. Yes, you can fill your Twin Peaks void. Right. So what I what, what I've realized though is that apparently uh, I have to watch myself because so many of our listeners are friends of yours. So. I can never upset you ever because <laughs> I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> so otherwise you would just be insulting me the entire time. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, no, yeah. of course not. <laughs> of course not. Have I ever insulted you? If I have, I apologize in advance. Not that I can recall. No. Okay. I, cannot recall I don't that. really believe it or not. I don't go out of my way to insult you. That's it's, good. That's a good way to live your life. I'm kind of, I'm kind of weird like that. I don't know why. But yeah. I don't know. I'm just weirdly polite and nice. Yeah, person. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So go figure. All right. So uh, of course we're going to talk about the return part eighteen, mm-hmm. the final episode of the return at last. Uh, it's taken us a little few more weeks to get there than after the original airing, but uh, actually I think that's kind of good because it's given us some time to reflect upon it a little bit. I think we needed a few weeks to process what we had seen. That too, yeah. I don't know about everybody else out there in podcast land, but this one is... Yeah. If we thought David Lynch left us hanging in 1991... Right. We had no idea. No. We had no... He. This is David Lynch's way of saying, you don't have a clue... Right. What... Being left hanging means, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if so you oh, if us. you thought you were frustrated before, well, strap in, kids, because we're going for a ride. I am almost too confused to be frustrated at this point. <laughs> well, let's, well, let's see what we can do about that. We'll see. Well, yes, we there's certainly sheriff. We do have a lot to talk about. So yes, we do. There's and, certainly plenty going on. And uh, we've already talked about Judy, but, you know, we're not going to entirely leave her out of this one, I don't think. 
no, I don't think so either. So, uh, but yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Um, might as well dive right in. Uh, probably going to have to go chronologically on this one as well, because so much is going on. Um, at least until the driving scenes where nothing is going on. Where nothing's going on. Yes. Yes. So, uh, but we'll talk about that. So we open up the final episode or is it dot, dot, dot question mark Mm -hmm. uh, with doppelganger Cooper in black lot in the black lodge in the red room, uh, the waiting room burning with fire, fire. He's just sitting in one of the black chairs. Yeah. On fire, and he's completely still. He's just burning. Yeah, the bur- it's like and the Burning Man, only the Twin Peaks version. <laughs> only the Twin Peaks version, and nowhere near as many unicycles or crazy hats. Yeah, or people that don't bathe. <laughs> <laughs> burning Man's what four days out in the desert, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's so, a little, it's a little rough, but uh, it's, a, it's a little gamey by so, the end of it. So, so yeah, we have Mister C Flambe. So it, it it almost it had this feel to me of that the Black Lodge is saying, okay, you sit there and you think about what you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's the timeout, <laughs> right? It's the yeah. it's the it's the timeout little, right. um, you know, it, instead of a instead he's of a little gra- cartoon, he's, ground, he's grounded. He's grounded instead of a little cartoon cloud with with rain, yeah, over it following everywhere. He's like got his own little little hell that follows him around wherever he goes. He should. So. You know, we, this is like begs for a Simpsons mashup, though. You realize where we should have like the blackboard, and he should be writing. You like, I will return to the Black Lodge when asked. I will return <laughs> to the Black Lodge when asked over and over yes. again. <laughs> <laughs> I will return when I am supposed to. The Simpsons. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, he's so, just he's just sitting there. Yep, yep, and uh, get ready to bring out the marshmallows and get the, roast some s'mores while you're waiting. I'm uh, not eating anything that though, that was that close to uh, doppelganger Cooper. That's he's true. Close. That's true. It could be a little uh, evil tainted. Yes, uh, it could be a little bit evil tainted. And yeah. talk about not bathing. True. True. He's pretty. He's he's probably pretty gamey too. Yeah. So. He's. I mean, he had that level like layer of grime all over him. He did. So. He did. And then when he got woodsman <laughs> massage. Yeah, because I mean, he's, yeah, he's getting bloody um, body massages like twice. Yeah. So you know, and I'm, I don't remember seeing him take a shower. So ew. exactly. Ew. Exactly. So no, I don't. Don't don't put that in your mouth. <laughs> You don't know where that's been. You don't know where that's been, kids. Yeah. Um, so we see Mike, the one-armed uh, spirit entity, uh, placing the seed on a chair with Cooper's lock of hair. Remember that little tidbit? Little, little lock of hair, and he gives it a little, couple little pinches. Yeah, and and it's kind of cool because it sounds like you know when you have um, like headphones to plug into a headphone jack on your stereo and it's very loose connection and you hear that because it's not yes. in all the way. That's, right. Or that, when that sound, when you're plugging your guitar into your amplifier, that that's already all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that little buzz. So, so yeah. Yep. And then, if, then of course he says the magic words, electricity. electricity. That's and, what does it. And the seed catches fire and Lo and behold, we got ourselves another Cooper Tulpa. We got ourselves another Cooper Tulpa. We have a new Dougie. Yes. We have a new Dougie who gets sent back home yep. with Janie E. and Sonny Jim. So we cut back to that red door. Remember, he said he was going to walk through that red door and then be home for good. He'd be home for good. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, uh, new Dougie shows up. Uh, he's still dressed as Cooper, interestingly enough. And in that black suit. True. He's not wearing that lime green, uh, that Garmin Bozia colored nightmare. Yeah, he's he's not wearing the lime green. He's not wearing the yeah. And he doesn't have golden he ha- rod. He doesn't have the mullet hair going. Doesn't have the mullet hair, and he's he's the Dougie that everyone has come to know and right. love and respect. Right. So this is this is the official version of Dougie two point oh. I think. Yeah, this is the Dougie upgrade. The and, Dougie up. and of yeah. course, you know, Dougie was never really one for 
lengthy speeches. So what does he say when he walks in the door and gets hugged? Home. 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 So, so there you go. So, yes, it does make a little more sense that no one is all that surprised that Dougie is not particularly verbose. Right. Once he comes back. But they still seem to like him and he still seemed to be able to do his job and get done what he needed done and exactly. be a dad. So so now he can just shuffle along in the office and get stuck in elevators once again. Hopefully this Dougie remembers how to pee. Let's hope. That is my, uh, yeah, yeah. Fingers, fingers crossed on that one. But, uh, yeah, but we, but, here. but we do get at least a resolution to that storyline. Yes. And that makes me happy that Janie E and, yeah. um, so, she, so they get their happy ending, which is nice. They have Dougie. They have a hundred and some thousand dollars. Sunny Jim has like the best playground set ever. He's got a gym set they, and they have the Mitchum brothers. If there's anything that they need. Right. If which anything is, that. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to like, oh, hey, know some gangsters that are that actually like you and are loyal to you. Exactly. And I don't think they're going to ask a whole heck of a lot from Dougie. It's not like they're going to say, here, Dougie, you got to go kill this guy for no, us. No, no, no. I don't think they want to bring Dougie in as a hit, hit man or something. But No, no. They, they, he got them their $30 million. He proved that it wasn't arson. Got them their $30 million and gave them a pie. There you go. So they're good. That could be one hell of a spinoff series, though. Oh, the Mitchum Brothers? Yeah, the Mitchum Brothers and Dougie. Wouldn't that be fantastic? <laughs> Mitchum Brothers and Dougie and their their uh, escapades with the Andes. Yeah. And every episode ends with them laughing and finger sandwiches. That would be great. That'd be, that yep. would be fantastic. That would be. All right, so uh, we go back to Cooper. We kind of get a little bit of a recap from the previous episode where we had Cooper leading Laura through the forest where we hear that, that – bug sound yeah and you know listen for the sounds and but, uh you know, we see her screaming like she did in part two and then poof she's gone poof. yes so, so then we pick up in the red room again not quite sure the chain of events here um because mike is talking with cooper all of a sudden and he's telling asking him again is it future or is it past and is this from episode, this is episode two, I think. Yes. Episode two or three. Yeah, yeah, it is. So we're going back I, and forth. I think it's two because three was when he was in space. Three was in space, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so yeah, we kind of get a retelling of those events that we've already seen. Uh, Mike leads Cooper through the curtains to see the arm. And, yeah. Uh, Here's what's weird, though. Yeah. Before he does that, we look over at the chairs. Yeah. But Laura doesn't come to talk to him. Right. So there's no discussion about arms bending back or right. anything like that. So So is did this is this replaying itself only without her because she was taken out of the Black Lodge? That's the thing I don't understand because we yeah. still see her scream and get ripped out. But He's not having that same conversation or, with her. Or she... are, we, are we seeing this new timeline? Because we know that there's a new timeline now. Some things might change. Yeah, some things might change. So, yeah, we could be seeing this. So this could be just the alternate reality or alternate timeline version of those events and how they that's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering, that we yeah. have now sort of reset right. everything. And so... we're now back to... Not necessarily Cooper still being stuck in the lodge, but Cooper, but we're, we're back to when Cooper was in the lodge because right. he changed history from 26 years ago. So what happens to him in the lodge is going to be a little bit different. Right. Exactly. Because, yeah, because when, you know, with Laura not being murdered, that obviously sets off a tra cha chain of events Now, presumably he shouldn't even be in the black lodge. If, right, because if Laura was never if Laura murdered, was never, he, would, he would never be involved in a case and then end up in the Black Lodge. Right, right. he would have never been in Twin Peaks. He would have never met Annie. There would have never been right that a, whole domino effect. Right, that's the thing. Now, however, he probably still would have had an affair with Caroline. 
So it's possible that he could have still been looking for Wyndham Earl. So you think maybe Wyndham Earl could have like lured him into the Black Lodge still as a result? That's the thing I'm I'm curious about. I'm wondering, does Wyndham Earl know about the Black Lodge because of these cases, or did he figure it out from something else? We don't know. Right, that's the thing. So it, it, it's quite possible that Wyndham Earl would have screwed with him anyway, done his whole right. Count of Monte Cristo because, thing. Yeah, but, yeah. His twirling the mustache, like, I gotta get revenge on you because right, right. you stole my woman. This this ridiculously crazy, yeah. intricate revenge plan that involves killing a bunch of other people first. Yeah. And <laughs> with, to me, that's just too That's just way too much time. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Or... Would, you know, would, uh, if Laura was still alive, does that mean, that probably still means that Bob was still in Leland, so would Leland have still killed Teresa Banks? Right. And therefore, would Cooper have gotten stuck out there looking for Agent Desmond, or, you know, who knows? Well, here, that's a, that's a good question, because, um... If essentially Teresa Banks, now it's possible that Ronette in the new timeline could have taken Laura's place. Right. We were talking and, about that last episode. Right, and right. The thing about that is, does. So that way the events would have unfolded. So that would have led to Cooper be, being in the Black Lodge. But does Bob care about Ronette the way he cared about Laura? I don't think so. That's the thing, because Bob is in Leland. Laura's Leland's daughter. So that, so if Bob was going to go for her, Leland would have followed right. to try and protect her, but Leland's not strong enough. So, <sighs> so many questions. would it have even, it, it, this is the thing. <laughs> this, that is, is this, so, is where, this is where it's getting dizzying. Right. And this is what is so great about yeah. time travel and changes in the time space continuum and time streams. Yes. And those kind of plot devices, because you can have this discussion Pretty much infinitely. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, because it, it things like end up going back on themselves, and yeah, you could just take this and it it because time has ripples, and I know this because obviously being a Doctor Who fan and big time travel buff, so time has ripples. So yeah, it it affects so many different things in so many different ways. So if you change one thing, it goes right down the timeline, and then you know like. Well, this would be affected. This would be affected, and yeah, it just—it could just become this whole big "what if" right discussion, right? And it's the Stephen Hawking theory <laughs> of infinite universes and infinite possibilities, <laughs> and the multiverse. Yes, right. And then you know, and then of course you have the um, butterfly theory, and yes, what you know, which is. <laughs> One of my, yeah. yeah, one of my favorite uh, Ray Simpsons, oh. Simpsons quotes where um, Homer goes back in time and he says, okay, remember the advice your father gave you on your wedding night? And that advice is, if you ever go back in time, don't step on anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Yeah. <laughs> that even... Who said that? There, we go. There, was a great, there was a great Doctor Who quote about that recently, uh, this past year. Uh, where you had like um, the Twelfth Doctor and and Bill, and they go back to Victorian era England, and she's all worried because of time traveling. She's like, you know, what happens if I step on a butterfly? And the Doctor's like, well, don't step on any butterflies. What have butterflies done to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, which I, I thought just was a don't big, do that. Yeah, exactly. Just don't do it. Yeah. It's no big deal. It's like you're like you're worrying about nothing. So. Right, exactly. So like, trust me, I'm an expert at this. You're cool. You're good. I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Yeah, exactly. We wouldn't have and, a show otherwise. So. Right, for the last 50 years. <laughs> yeah. And time travel is also can also be like a wish that you make through a genie. Yes. Where it just goes horribly, horribly wrong because you forgot one little element. You mean like a monkey's paw? Exactly like a monkey's paw. Right. Where, you know, I want to be rich and famous. Oh, okay, well, then you're Hitler. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> Basically, if you don't pay it, the devil's in the details. If you don't really 
think about the ramifications or what have you. You can get burned. Again, fabulous, well. fabulous Simpsons lessons. I'm going to wish for a turkey sandwich yep. with mustard on rye bread. And, and yeah. I don't want any zombie turkeys. <laughs> I don't want to turn into a turkey myself. Right. No funny business. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I did love that that monkey's pie. I think it was on a, one of the uh, Simpsons Halloween Treehouse of Horror. Treehouse of Horror yeah, number yeah. two yeah, or three. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, so uh, back to the arm because the arm is talking to Cooper, and then this time though, the arm starts quoting Audrey Horn. Is it the story of the little girl who lives down the lane? And is it? <laughs> is it Charlie? And yeah. I went crazy when yeah. I saw that. I, when, when the arm said, is it the story of, and I just went, the little girl that lives down the lane. Yep. And when it said I, that, I, did I the same thing. just about lost my mind. I'm like, what the hell does that mean right. for Audrey? What is, and, and that makes you wonder, what did Cooper do? And is it now affecting Audrey? Instead of Laura. Well, if suddenly Audrey's in an, an institution or something because mm-hmm. of this alternate timeline, because we don't know. Audrey never interacted with any other characters. No, just Charlie. Just Charlie, who could have been a manifestation or her therapist or whomever. Right. So we don't know. I mean, yeah, she was in the roadhouse, but it wasn't like she interacted with any of the regular cast. It's not as though we saw anyone... Right. from the roadhouse speak to her and like i said even when they ordered martinis yep they were ready the, for them yeah they, the bartender just pulled them out from under like like yep. they were waiting here you go like, here's like your Marti- this was a, like this was a bad play and it wasn't it wasn't one of the renault's tanning bar it was someone we'd never seen before right so it was probably just some sort of residual memory for audrey of the roadhouse so, so, so is Audrey in the institution because Cooper mucked with the timeline? Something, yeah, but something's going on, and I don't feel like I have enough information to feel right. comfortable about what it is. We need another season badly. We need another season badly. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to do this forever. Yep. Well, hey, Which I'm happy hey, to do. Hey, it keeps the podcast going, right? Yeah, I'm seriously happy to do. Yep. All so. right. So, um, so that happened. Uh, we see Laura whispering into Cooper's ear again Mm -hmm. and see him gasping at what he hears. We still don't know what she says here. It's, it, it looked as though what he said to her this time was a little more shocking than what she'd said in the past. Right. He does gasp a little bit more, although he did gasp in part one or part two, but, but here I think he does it a little bit more. You hear more of an audible gasp. Right. Right. He's. He seems much more surprised. Right. So she, then she screams again and vanishes, just like she did in part two. Mm-hmm. And then um, Cooper goes th- through the motions. He ends up meeting Leland Palmer again. Yes. Who again tells him to find Laura. Right. I'm kind of let down we didn't get to see more of Ray Wise. That more Ray Wise is always a good thing. Yeah. That's true. Uh, again, I mean, I I know his character was killed off, but he could have still been there in the lodge, obviously. That hasn't necessarily stopped anybody. No, 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 no. (laughs) Yeah, especially Cheryl Lee, as we'll we'll talk about. Yes, definitely. All right. And there's, again, something unsettling about the fact that even after he's, even after Bob has left him and he's, He's dead. He's still sort of trapped yeah. in the lodge, helpless yeah, and well, unable to help Laura, well, regardless Le- of what this time stream is. Well, Leland gets such a raw deal. I mean, Bob yeah, enters his body. You know, it's beyond his control. So he, he ends up killing his daughter. Yep. And then uh, Bob kills him by ramming his head into the... Uh, um, holding room door mm-hmm. over and over again. Right. That event that eventually kills him, and then he ends up in the Black Lodge, 
where he's apparently trapped for eternity. So, like, he's damned no matter what, even and though even though it was under his control. Right, and it's not so much that he's trapped, it's that he's so helpless. Yeah. You know, he's still just sitting there, and he knows that Laura's been ripped. Yeah. Ripped out of the lodge, and all he can do is sit there and ask Cooper to find Laura. Right. He's and not able to take an active participation in, in events. He can't do anything. He can't help Laura. He can't help Sarah. He can't do anything. Right. And so that is a that is an incredibly raw deal because, and I was trying to, I, I need to watch the original series again and remember, because I don't remember how old he was, but I think he was like 14 or 15 when, oh, when Bob, Bob showed up. Yeah, could be. Yeah, and he's. Starts he's flicking matches there. at him and yeah. He's just been there this whole time. Yep. So. All right. So we see Coper going through the curtains again. Only this time he's kind of shaking his hand back and forth. He kind of makes the curtains. Yeah. It re- makes rustle. them ripple. Yes. And uh, so he's apparently has more control of what he's doing in the, like he knows how to work the Black Lodge now. It's almost as though he can choose his own path in the lodge. Right. Which is very strange. Yeah, so he seems like he has more control. Of course, he goes, he leaves the lodge now. Before he was trapped, but now he can just leave at will. Right, he can just leave, and it and it looks like he goes right into the woods. Yeah, right in Glast- he, Glastonbury Grove. Where we've seen before that the curtains can just appear at certain times of... Right, when, the, when, when times. there's like a certain astrological alignment. Yes. Yeah. So uh, he leaves there. Diane is waiting for him. Yes, Diane is there, and, and they. And this is red haired Diane. This is red haired Diane, and they exchange. Is it really you? Yes, it's really me. Is it really you? Yeah. So they both. So they're both are, kind of like not sure if the other is real or not. Right. And I can't say I blame them. No, not really. <laughs> After what they've been through. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um. So, and then at that point, uh, after they kind of confirm that the, each other is the other, that they say they are, uh, the gateway vanishes. Mm-hmm. So then we pick up the next morning. So the gateway vanishes, which means we're done changing things right now. We're sort of, yeah, that's this is, now we're kind out of locked control. In. We're, we're locked in. We're locked in right now. Yes. Yeah, yes. So we pick up the next morning, or at least we think it's the next morning. Cooper and Diane are driving down the desert highway in an old black sedan. Like something from the 60s, maybe? Is it black at this point, or is it blue still? I think it's black. I think it's, I okay. think it's the same color car, but just a different, older car. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's an older but car. But basically, you can tell because it has like a big steering wheel. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the older, like older style windows and mirrors and whatnot. Bench seat, and yes, it's definitely yeah. an older car. Yeah. No electronics of any kind, really, in the car. No. Apart from no. the radio, maybe. Right. And I think it's, it's blue interior. That's what it is. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe yeah, the, the car is black blue. and the interior is blue. Okay. Right. All right. That makes sense. Um, so they're driving down the highway, and Cooper is apparently following the electrical lines. Just yes. like Just like Doppelganger Cooper was. Just like Doppelganger Cooper did, and so they find the place. This yep. is the place. Yep. And Cooper says, "Once we cross, this could all be different." Right. And Diane's asking him, "Like, hey, are you sure you want to do this?" Right. And we this don't. Could... And then she says, "Like, you don't know what it's going to be like once we." And then she's interrupted. And then Cooper says, "I know. We're at that point now. I can feel it." Right. And Cooper talks about, hey, we've traveled exactly 430 miles, 430. 430, yes, that's where we get our 430. Yep. So. And then Diane again says, hey, just think about it, Cooper. mm Mm-hmm. So they're not, they're not sure what they're heading into. Well, she knows what Cooper wants to do, but she's not sure if it's a good idea. Right. Right. So they sort of. Yep. So Cooper, gradually start driving. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, after Cooper got out and listened for the like the electrical crackling, mm-hmm. and then he says like, "Kiss me," 
because once we cross, it could all be different. Right. So they kiss, and then Diane says, let's go. So they start driving, and then everything gets very electrical. The car lights up, and it goes flickery from dark to light, and then all of a sudden it's nighttime. Right. Boom. Boom, nighttime. Yep. So apparently they crossed over. They jumped another track. Right. So is so. this a third timeline, or is it the alternate timeline? Well, the, the original timeline? We don't know. It's just going to keep getting weirder. It is. So this is where yeah. the question marks start filling up in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, they end up arriving at a motel. Right. And Cooper goes inside to check in while Diane waits in the car. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> but then Diane's kind of looking around and then all of a sudden she sees herself step into view. Right. From the over by where the, the office. Yeah. There's like an, like a, like an awning. Is. There's like an awning or something. And then she steps out behind that. Or front, right. There's, there's uh, an awning over where the cars would drive up and. Right. Then there are some pillars and she steps out from behind one of the pillars while Cooper is inside checking in and getting a room. Now let's also note here that this is a motel, an old like motor lodge hotel. Right. AKA one story motel. Yes. So just remember that this is a one story motel for right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're not sure. Okay. So, is it Diane from the future? Diane from the past? Is it a tulpa? We don't know. Right. And they look at each other. You know, Cooper comes out of the hotel, and of course she's just gone. Right. And Diane gives her this look, gives well, Diane in the car, who is the Diane we've had up until now, gives her this look, gives up behind the pillar, Diane, this look of, what are you doing here? Right. You shouldn't be here or something. Right. Why Why are you here too? And when Cooper comes out and other Diane is gone, I'm curious as to, is she gone or do they switch places or did they merge together? Yeah, we don't know what, yeah. We don't know. We don't know if there was a bot, you know, a switch, like you said. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we don't know what happened here. No, we do not. And we're never going to know, are we? No, we're never going to know. <laughs> that is true. We're never going to know. All right. So, um, so let those theories fly. Um, Cooper comes out, waits by the door by room seven. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you wanting to do Twin Peaks trivia later, uh, waits there for Diane to join him. They go inside, and then Diane turns on the light, but Cooper says, turn it off. So Diane turns it off, and it's interesting because Cooper at this point is speaking kind of uh, very doppelgangery. He is. He's very matter of fact, very unemotional, not very, unemotional, unemotional, not very verbose, very small amounts of word S- choices, succinct, yeah. very succinct. Yes, there are no wasted, no wasted words right. here. And Diane says, "Well, what do we do now?" And okay, you're in a you're in a motel room. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> probably doesn't have uh, probably doesn't have cable. Yep. So what do you think you're doing? Pretty much. So. <laughs> yep. Nope. Maybe not so much, but you know, hey, he, he gives you something for the Twin Peaks slash fic. So there you go. <laughs> oh geez louise yeah um, um so here's something interesting yes uh music starts to play yeah a very familiar song isn't it yeah it's my it's my prayer by the platters which we heard in episode eight right when and then of course the exact scene where the woodsman that woodsman comes by and kills all the people at the radio station right that's the song that's playing when he's killing everyone before he takes the microphone. Yeah. So and very interesting cho- musical choice here. By and Lynch. says his, this is the water and this is the well drink long and descend mm-hmm. statement. So yes, that is the same song. 
and um, just sort of a bit of real world trivia about this. This is um, this is a body double. Yeah. Uh, it is of not Laura, of Laura Dern. Laura Dern. Um, we see a body double in Cooper's face, or we see a close up of Laura Dern. Right. And it's very, it's very clever editing. Let's just put it that way. It's very clever editing, which is great because how many of you out there would want to do a, an on camera sex scene with your ex boyfriend? Raise your hand. Slightly awkward. Yes, and I hear proverbial crickets and yeah, see yeah. tumbleweed in my mind. Yes, that's not anything anybody wants to do. So maybe it's just David that- Lynch did make them kiss, but I'm sure they're both like, you know, I no, nah, I'm not sure if I feel like doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that once they they got their scripts, that they probably were like, uh, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah. I, David, I love you, but right. They are professionals, but I wouldn't want to do this if I were them too. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a little too much yeah. for me. But unless, unless, a, unless he Lynch said, you know, like everybody relax, you know, I, we're not going to actually sh- have you guys film this together, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, so yeah, um, so they start. It's a having, very uncomfortable sex scene. Too. Yeah, yeah. They start having. Uh, Diane is on top. Um, mm-hmm. So essentially, she's the power in this. Um, well, she knows what she wants and how to get it. Right, exactly. So Cooper, well, my my point is that you know, she has at least a, a sort of control over this. Right, but she still looks like this is painful, not in a physical yeah. way, yeah, but in an emotional way. Like she's almost ready to cry. Right, and, and Cooper it, seems very unemotional. Yeah, and it doesn't help that yeah, Cooper's not very emotional and very doppelganger Cooper like because hey. Remember, Doppelganger Cooper raped her. Right. So this could be a so, bad memory for her, yes. too. And interestingly enough, during the sex scene, yeah. she spends a lot of time covering his face. Right. Very much like Leland covered Teresa Banks' face. Oh, I didn't catch I didn't catch that part, but you're right. So it, I'm not it, sure. But... but See, I was thinking that okay, she just didn't want to look at him because, I mean, I think she she loves him, but she didn't like want to look at him because obviously his face reminds her of of Doppelganger Cooper. So this That's is this, possible, yeah. this this is this like problem now they they have in their budding relationship here, right? And that could be also why she's on top because. Right. She's calling the shots this time, regardless maybe, of maybe, what he looks like and regardless of what memories this brings up for her. Right. Maybe Cooper she, wanted her to have that control a little bit so that she would feel. I don't if, know. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, no explanation at all. Nope. So it's all supposition at this point. Um, Cooper wakes up the next morning, gets the Dear Richard letter. Yeah. This was interesting because we finally get our Richard and Linda. Yeah. Diane's so, gone. She's nowhere to be found. Diane's gone. If, if this was, in fact, Diane. Right. Because we don't know. And if this is, in fact, Cooper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If this is, in fact, Cooper. That's a good point. So, yeah. So, the note reads, Dear Richard, when you read this, I'll be gone. Please don't try to find me. I don't recognize, don't recognize you, you anymore. anymore. Yeah. Whatever it was we had together is over, Linda. Linda. So the yes. Richard, Richard and Linda, and so what the hell? Yeah, what, exactly. So <laughs> it, I'm just, we're just trying, like trying to process this, and you're like, okay, so is Cooper Cooper or is it Cooper Linda? And it is Diane, or you know, is is Cooper you know Richard and is Diane Linda? What 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 is it? Or are we in a different time stream right. and Cooper just happens to still be in bed in the same place right. that the hotel he and Diane checked into yeah. had been, but now he's just in a different room. I don't know though, because it's the same furniture. So, Or was that letter already there 
and they just not notice it. And then Cooper finally picks it up and goes, Oh, <laughs> thinking it's for him. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think the letter was there though. No, I that's don't a, think so either. Yeah. That's a good I question. Think, but, uh, so yeah. Okay. So, all right. Everybody got that. Yeah. Everybody following this so far. Yeah. Okay. Please explain it to us. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Cooper walks outside after getting dressed. How many stories is the hotel he's in? <sighs> More than one. Let's just yeah. put, put it that two way. Two stories. Yeah, two, two stories and like freaking palm trees. Like where the hell is he? Yeah. So apparently he's in a completely different hotel now than the one he slept in. The car, which was originally parked outside room seven, is no longer there. It's off you know, like farther down in the parking lot. It's off to the side. It's way down somewhere else. And, oh, hey, the car is not the same car. car. It's a more modern version of that car. It's like a Lincoln or something like that. Yeah, Yeah. it was like a sedan. I mean, it's a black sedan, but yeah, it's it's like something from, hey, the 2000s at least. Mm Mm-hmm. And Exactly. uh, So. And Cooper apparently doesn't think anything of this, really. He's not like, yeah, how does he know to get in that car? Right. I mean, like, how has, does he know? Presum- presumably he has the keys to that car because he can. Yeah. Open. Yeah, seriously. He, starts, so. he starts it up. So apparently it's his car, but he doesn't notice the change. Like the change happened around him. Right. Right. So, so, he, so he's I, caught up in it. And as far as he's concerned, it's normal. Mm hmm. So, so yeah, he's so we found very, that, un, very unfazed by this. Yeah. So. Um, he's driving down the road after leaving the hotel, the motel, uh, stops. See, he drives by a local diner called Judy's Judy's. coffee shop. Yep. So we are going to talk about Judy again. We're going to talk about Judy. And, uh, there is a waitress there named Christy. She's getting hassled. Yeah. But Christy, interestingly enough, she's played by Clint Eastwood's daughter, Francesca. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yep. So a little, little another trivia bit for you there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Cooper asks Christy, walks right in and says, is there another waitress that works here? So he's like, he has a specific idea of who he's looking for. He's looking for someone specifically, even though when he drove by Judy's coffee shop, right. he looked at it. Yeah. Not necessarily. He he almost looked surprised to see it. Uh, not necessarily yeah, surprised. Yeah, he wasn't like he wasn't expecting it. Right. It wasn't like he was looking for Judy's. He looked over. He saw it and almost thought, "Huh, pie and coffee. Sure, why not?" Yeah, but but now he's but suddenly for someone some place he was originally going to just drive by until he spotted it. Mm-hmm. He has a specific goal in mind here. Right. And so. Christy is just like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there's another waitress. It's her day off. This is her third day off. Yes, she hasn't been there. Translation, I've been covering her ass for three days. Exactly. (laughs) Dealing with these these cowboy hat guys that keep hassling me that Cooper just takes down, which I just loved. That was fantastic. So, yeah, so like, yeah, he tells him to stop and then the one comes over. Cooper grabs his gun kicks him in the balls Mm -hmm. and then shoots another cowboy. There's like three of these guys shoots another cowboy in the foot. Then he tells the third cowboy to put his gun down and sit beside the other two. And meanwhile, you got like an old couple sitting nearby that are just watching this whole thing go down. Right. They're just, (laughs) they're just eating their pancakes. They're just like themselves. Yeah. And, um, no, Cooper, now he has his gun in his hand. He's pointing into the cowboys, but then he's kind of waving it mm-hmm. around. It's like he's not really aware that he has a gun in his hand and how people are reacting to it. Right, right. So he, so, so he asked Christy for the address uh, to put it on a piece of paper. for the, And then Cooper puts all of the cowboys' guns, all three of them, in a deep fryer. Yeah, he takes the fries out and yeah. he says... He says, where do these go? And he just hangs them up, and then he puts yeah. the guns, and then he tells the, the cook in the it, back. You just put it on the hook there. <laughs> just put it on the hook. And then he says to the cook in the back, I don't know if this oil is hot enough to let these bullets up, but I'd move if I were you. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's one thing I was wondering. Just like, well, I hope that Friar isn't going to set off those bullets. But exactly, Cooper, Cooper does warn everybody, hey, you might want to back away from this thing. He does warn everybody. And so he gets the address and says, it's okay, I'm with the FBI. Yeah. Still holding so, the gun, kind of waving it around as he's exactly. talking. Exactly. Exactly. Um, those and, guys were jerks. They, they got yeah. what they deserved. So then he walks outside, dries off. And then, of course, one of the cowboys has to do the, what the F just happened? <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, that's where we are all trying to figure this, this noise out. Yeah. yeah. So, that, so it's, it's kind of funny because David Lynch keeps having characters like, you know, you know like um, Bradley Mitchum or whatever, saying mm-hmm. stuff like this. So he's aware. Lynch is aware. That he's confusing the hell out of everybody, but he doesn't care. Exactly. What the F kind of neighborhood is yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. People are very stressed these days. Yeah, what the <laughs> F is going on? Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, he's just, it, I think he's just trolling the hell out of everybody mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so Cooper drives to the address, and we see mm-hmm. kind of a, like, kind of a little bit rundown house. Mm-hmm. And we also see telephone pole with a six on it. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that number six telephone pole, that uh-huh. one. That, well, and like this empty but, lot but, of But hey, wasn't, wasn't that telephone pole just outside the Fat Trout trailer park in Twin Peaks? And wasn't that telephone pole outside of the zone where Bill Hastings had his head explode in the back of the cop car? Right. I forgot about that one. Yeah. What is with this telephone pole? This, yeah. this house... It's a little like pink stucco house. It looks like it's in the zone. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's, that's that's it's the first thing, the first thing I wondered was like, is that the house from the the that little cordoned off area? Yes, from the zone, right? Yeah, from that yeah, yeah. That, that empty lot because it's a it's like a crappy looking lot, but the, it, you know there's there is a house there. So he knocks on the door, right? And some. And a woman answers it who uh, looks a lot like Laura Palmer because it's Cheryl Lee answers the door. What? What? So, yeah. Man. So, so it's, it's Cheryl Lee. So we don't, we're just go like going, shaking your head going, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, trying to figure out what happened. Um so Cooper is kind of the same way. He he keeps calling her. Well, first thing, this woman, whose name we later find out is Carrie, not Laura. Carrie Page. Carrie Page. And uh, so first thing out of her mouth, she asks, did you find him? And Cooper's just like going, Laura? She's like, who? What? Laura? What, you, who? you didn't find him? And, so you're not Laura Palmer? And she's like, no, I'm not. What? Yeah, my name's my name's Carrie Page, and uh, she tries to close the door, and then Cooper's like, "Wait, so the name Laura Palmer means nothing to you?" And she says, "Look, I don't know what you want, but I'm not her. I'm not her." Right. So he's like, "Your mother's name is Leland, and your your mother's your fa- name is Sarah, and your yeah. father's name is Leland." Yeah. And then she says, "You like?" She's like blinking, going, "Okay." And then she says, "Yeah." Then he says, "Yeah, your mother's name is Sarah," and that kind of gets her to like. A little twitch a little bit. Yeah, and she's like, what's going on? Yeah, she's like, what's going on? And Cooper's all, it's difficult to explain. No kidding. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. For, thank <laughs> what you, Cap- else thank, is thank you, Captain Obvious. And he uh, says he wants to take her to yeah, it's, it's strange, her mother's home. Right, as strange as it sounds, I think you're a girl named Laura Palmer. I'm going to take you to your mother's home, your home at one time, and Carrie's obviously taken aback by this she says look normally somebody like you comes along and i tell them to f off Mm -hmm. the door would be slammed in their face right now i gotta get out of dodge so yes so riding with the fbi just might save my ass exactly because something is going on yeah with carrie page right and it's we it's we don't quite know yet because but yeah obviously she something's up uh, she's in a hurry to leave. She says, where, are we, where, are we, where are we going? And then Cooper has to explain, oh, it's Twin Peaks, Washington. She's like, D.C.? No, D.C.? state. No, state. Yeah. Is it a long way away? It's a ways away. 
<laughs> it's a ways away because they are in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out, yeah, all this, they're in Odessa, Texas, of all they're places. They're in Odessa, Texas. Right. So, so Cooper, or not Cooper, Carrie is just like, okay, let me get my things. Come on in. Come on in. Cooper's like, yeah. okay. So he goes in her house and she's like, give me a minute. Then as she leaves the, after she leaves the room, she, Cooper looks over. There's a guy in a chair nearby. Who's been shot in the head. Yeah. He's like only dead with a bullet wound in his forehead. Mm-hmm. And she's oddly unconcerned about letting the FBI in her house with this guy there. Yeah. And he looks, you know, he's got his hands are sort of floating. I mean, he's got rigor mortis at this point. He's been right. there for a while. Yeah. We don't know how long he's been dead, but apparently it's been a while. Mm-hmm. So Cooper then looks over to the mantle and he sees a small white horse. White horse. And it's kind of like there on the mantelpiece, and then behind it is like a black circular plate. It's like a blue plate, yeah. I think it's black. I think it's supposed to contrast the white and the black. You know, like kind of like the chevron pattern, maybe? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I thought it was blue, though. I think it's black. Um, I guess yeah. myself. Uh, but uh, so Carrie's phone's ringing at this point. She completely ignores the ringing. Right. And she says, well, do I need a coat? Cooper's like, no, take a coat if you got one. Yeah, it's Washington. Yes, you need a coat. Yeah. I've got a couple. I'll grab one. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then uh, she says, look, I don't have any food here. Cooper's like, okay, I'll get you food on the way. Mm-hmm. Then this excites her. She's like, all right, let's go. All right, let's go. You know, she's she's sort of looking in the house yeah. at the phone as they leave. Like, I don't know who that is, but it can't be good. I'm getting the hell out of here. So it's kind of funny to see Cheryl Lee doing this like completely brand new character. Yes, that, was that pretty, is fun. It was pretty funny. I'm sure she probably had a, had a ball with it. Um, Carrie keeps ignoring the phone, and they just leave with the dead guy still there, not doing with the dead guy still there, just yeah. nothing. Yeah, it's like Cooper, yeah. and Cooper seems completely unfazed by this. She's like, "Okay, I guess we're just not going to talk about this dead guy in the chair." Right, like I said, she seems oddly un unconcerned about letting the FBI in with yeah, the dead guy. Yeah, yeah. Is it maybe That's because it. this is a dream? Ooh, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? All right, so they uh, they take off driving. So this is the first of our little driving trips. Uh, yeah, we got a long way to go. Yeah, we do. Uh, on the way, Cooper or Carrie finally asks Cooper if he's really an FBI agent. So he flashes his badge and says, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carrie says, at least we're getting out of this effing town, Odessa. Yep. Then we cut to nighttime. So presumably we're just time jumping here for the, uh, because it's such a long trip Uh, from Texas to Washington state. Go figure. Carrie sees headlights from a car behind them. And then she's like, starts to get a little paranoid. She's like, is someone following us? Right. So she's maybe, not maybe this has to do something with the dead guy, presumably. She's worried about. Yeah, that's the thing. Or that whoever because we don't quite know if she shot the dead guy. Right. Or if or she he just, was shot in her house and now yeah. shit's going down that she's a part of. But she did and, talk about like, hey, I need to like I'm in deep trouble. Right. Because you know, maybe riding with the FBI might save my ass. Mm-hmm. So. All uh, right. So the car turns off eventually onto another highway. Uh, then Carrie starts kind of like mumbling stuff. She says, I tried to keep a clean house, keep everything organized. Uh, in those days, I was too young to know better. We have no idea what she's so talking about. So is she talking about Laura? Her life is Laura, maybe? Maybe that she, because, you know, she's she trying did, she to. she tried to keep that facade. She as, sure did. Yeah. Of the, of the, the person, wholesome the per- homecoming yeah, queen yeah, and the, perfect daughter. and Right. And underneath there is that dark secrets that she. The loved. dark secret underbelly that is. Yeah. Laura Palmer. Yep. Yeah, uh, they stop at a Valero gas station. Mm-hmm. And then they eventually cross a bridge, and everybody's 
thanking God at this point because, hey, they arrive in Twin Peaks at last. They arrive in Twin Peaks. Now, um, that's almost a 2,000 mile drive. Right. That they fit in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Only on one take of gas. That's pretty good gas mileage. That, yeah, that's that's pretty good. I, I, you know, I'm not quite sure what this car is, but you know, thank you, David Lynch, for not making us watch this entire drive. Yeah. But yeah, Odessa, Texas to I have the Seattle. feeling that if David Lynch could, he would show us the entire drive. He, yeah, he would show us that, yeah. <laughs> Odessa, Texas to Seattle is almost 2,000 miles. Right. So It's not just right around the corner. No, no. it's quite a long drive. Yes. Yeah. All right, so uh, Cooper drives by the double R. We see mm-hmm. that it's, because it's late, it's closed. Right. A little metaphor there for the show, perhaps. Or... Another, uh, there's nothing to see. There's nothing to, there's, there's, there's nothing to give anything away. We can't see right. who's in there. Right. We can't see who's working there. We well, there, can't were, see there weren't any cars there. in the parking lot. It was completely right. empty. There, there's no cars. This is very. Like a ghost town. Right. This, this, well, in Twin Peaks, you know. Yeah, it's not you like know, it's. Still, it's the you know, the old expression rolls up the sidewalks at 10 p.m. Right. So you know we're not terribly surprised. Well, they do. They do have a population of 51,000. That's true, but I don't think there's much nightlife other than the roadhouse. Yeah, remember everybody's and at the roadhouse. Anything else? You go north of the border to One Eye Jacks if you want your gambling and your drinks and your ladies for the evening. But right, right. So there's not a lot going on, and this is not something you necessarily notice the first time around, but what's going on, not to get too ahead of myself, is that there's nothing to give anything away here. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Well, it's it's Lynch. He's, he's setting up this another mystery right at yeah. the end. Right at the end. Right. So, um, so we uh, – Cooper asked Carrie if – she recognizes anything as they start driving by houses in driving a, through very, town a very familiar neighborhood. Yes. And then when the car stops and then Cooper asks if she recognizes that house over there. Laura's house. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's the, it's the Palmer house. Carrie says no. So they get out of the car. Cooper takes Carrie by the hand, leads her up. Kind of, mm-hmm. kind of like he did in Ghostwood Forest. Exactly like he did in Ghostwood Forest. Right. He's he's going to lead her to where she needs to be, or so he thinks. Right. Yeah. So they knock on the front door, and a woman, instead of Sarah Palmer, a woman with long blonde hair, mm-hmm. who we found out like later is Mary Reber, the actual owner of the house. Yes, yeah, she's the actual owner of the house. I. Looked her up on IMDb and the night that this that this finale right. aired, and my mind was just mashed potatoes at that point. So I looked her up to see who she was, and nothing came up. Nothing came up. There's absolutely nothing. I'm like, okay, what the hell? Does this person even exist? <laughs> and then so I I googled her and I found an article that was written a uh, couple years ago from when they first started filming. Right. That hey. Um, filming's about to start in this neighborhood and you might hear screaming, but it's okay. And uh, it's not Twin Peaks, but it's totally Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, Mary Reber is the actual owner of the Palmer house. Yeah. So. So, so apparently David Lynch asked her to be a part of this and she said, of course, <laughs> duh. Of course. Why wouldn't you? They, uh, and apparently their guest room is Laura's bedroom. Yeah. And they have it made up to look like Laura's bedroom as much as possible. Yeah. Including a crouching mannequin at the foot of the bed that's dressed up to look like Bob. Which would just horrify you. They said that a lot of friends have refused to stay in that room. Yeah. I would have yeah. I would have peed myself if I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been like like leaving skid marks as you run out of the house. <laughs> exactly. As much as I would love to know these <laughs> that they're home. Yeah. Because I think, you know, for no other reason than I think that's awesome that they kept yeah. the room that way. I, I um, well, these are know, obviously it, hey, it's one hell of a com- it's one hell of a conversation piece. Yeah, these are obviously people I would enjoy in real life because of their commitment to the bit. Yeah, but there is no way I could handle that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So much. he knocks on the door, and yeah, while she, you're on the porch, yeah. Laura's sort of, well, Carrie. Carrie. We sort say of looking way. around, like, kind of, she's starting to get a little freaked. She's a little jittery, let's just put it that yeah. way. Yeah. And she's, she's, kinda, and she's trying to, like, she's trying to figure out what Cooper's doing, I think. Yeah. And Cooper is kind of like, okay, this is not going according to plan, guys. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, he's uh, he introduces himself as FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, flashes the badge again. So we get a lot of him. It's like three times he's flashed this badge in this episode. Uh, mm-hmm. He says, is Sarah Palmer here? And uh, the woman is like, who? Sarah Palmer. Nope. Nobody here by that name. Right. And uh, do you know Sarah Palmer? Nope. Is this your house? Do you, do you own, own this house? Or do you rent it? Or do you rent this house? Yeah. And she says, yes, we own this house. And who did you buy it from? This, the woman, go ahead. She leans behind the door. So there's obviously somebody else there. Right. She leans behind the door to talk to, to someone, obviously, uh, you know, a, a, probably a spouse or a partner or something. You know, and says basically says who? What was the name of the people we bought this house? You know, yeah. when when did we when did we buy this house? Or um, now we don't know who exactly she's talking to. No, we do not see who she's talking. We never see who she's talking. It's to. implied that's her husband, but we don't know for sure. Right, we have no idea. Yeah. So either like she's being told what to say, or we don't know. And uh, so the. Um, so, uh, Cooper asks, who did you buy it from? And, and again, she has to confer with the door. Right. And then finally she says, Chalfont. Chalfont. And dun, dun, oh, dun. if you wanted to see my, my eyeballs pop out of my brain yep. right onto the coffee table, that's this is about as close as you were ever going to get. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, oh, ah, woo. Yep. So, so yeah, this is alarm. Like if you're a, like if you've watched everything, especially Firewalk with me, mm-hmm. the alarm bells are going off at this point. You know, and, so and she says she think. says she says a Mrs. Chalfont, and Cooper asks, do, "Do you know who she bought it from?" And then, and then uh, the woman says, "No, I don't." But she asks her husband or mm-hmm. whomever. Honey, do you know or, who owned it? Yeah. Yeah. We think and, it's a husband because it's a male voice. Right. So. And then we don't he, know. Right. So Cooper asks, and this is the big question, what is your name? And if you thought you were surprised by Chalfont. Yes. <laughs> so you, you had no idea how surprised you were going to be here. Her name is Alice Tremont. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my goodness. Because so now. Shut up, you. All right, go away, Neil. There I we am, go. So is is that? So remember, yeah, but it was there was two Chalfonts. Weird, huh? Weird, huh? Yeah. So that's the that's the thing. So and you know, part of me is wondering, like, is that actually a husband, mm-hmm. or is that a grandson behind the door that she's see? And that's what of? I was wondering. It's like, okay, is yeah. she the? Is this woman that Cooper is speaking to? Is that actually the grandmother? That we saw on mm-hmm. Fire Walk with me and on the show original series, <laughs> uh, now in a different form, and was the person? Yeah, was she talking to her grandson? Right. Although I do like the theory that I kind of saw that oh maybe uh, Mrs. Chalfont's grandson uh, grew up to become Red, that guy who was doing the magic tricks. Oh, okay. That we never got to find anything about because he was a total dead end to nowhere. All he was was kind of, you know, annoying. Yeah, we thought he was going to be a major player, and he turned out to be just like an afterthought, really. Right. That's the thing. He was kind of annoying because he was just, you know, I personally wasn't a big fan of him because he was keeping uh, Bobby and Shelly apart. Right. Yeah. It was like, oh, we don't so. like him because, yeah, we want we want Bobby and Shelly to be together. So, yeah. Yes, we do. We want we want the Briggses to be a happy family and everybody to be healthy right. and Reunited. not on yeah. cocaine anymore. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they leave, you know, sorry to bother you, sorry to bother you so late at night. Yeah. 
And they they both sort of walk away kind of shell-shocked. Cooper doesn't understand what's going on. Yep. And Carrie can't stop looking at the house. Yeah. So, oh, and we should also mention that, hey, Alice, you know, kind of like Alice through the looking glass, perhaps. Oh. Little uh, Alice in Wonderland metaphor going on here. Perhaps. 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 Um, so, yeah, they Cooper and Carrie walk back down the steps to the street. Cooper or Carrie is watching Cooper and Cooper at this point is really confused. He's very, very confused. He looks really like, you know, just, he looks completely thrown. And then he turns and looks over at Carrie and goes, what year is this? Dun, dun, dun. And and that's when we start realizing that we have not seen people. We have not seen cars. Is it his future is or very, is it past? His car is very nondescript. We really have no idea right. what year it is. They haven't used a cell phone. They also haven't used a pay phone. Right. But um, presumably yeah, it's, it's near in this time because of the car that he's driving. Right. But the car he's driving has those push that push button lock, that yeah. combination yeah. push button yeah. lock. Yeah. yeah. Which was a 90s thing. Oh, was it? Yeah. So okay, that uh, could go a couple of different ways. Yeah. So Carrie, at this point, she like blinks like she's remembering something. Right. She's starting to get a little shaky. Yeah. She's, she's again, she can't stop looking at the house. And then she's just staring at the house and sort of shaking and shaking. And then screams that Laura Palmer scream. Nope, not, not, not just yet. Because she does hear the sound of Sarah Palmer. <gasps> That's right. I forgot about Sarah Palmer. Laura, Laura. Laura. And that was obviously from the pilot of the original yes. series. Yes. And then she's really shaken at this point because I think now the memories are flooding back. Right. And that then, presumably now that she remembers she's Laura again, Looks at the house and yeah, unloads with that bud another Cheryl Lee patented blood curdling scream, mm-hmm. and uh, all of a sudden the lights go off in the, the power, lights in, in the Palmer house and everywhere else in the neighborhood as if it like like a transformer blew. Right, the Palmer house lights go out and then the screen goes black. Yeah, and then it's kind of black for a long a, a good while and then. Then we see um, the final scene of the series is a slow-moving image, once again, of Laura whispering into Cooper's ear, Mm -hmm. and then the credits roll. And then it's followed by a silent version of the Lynch Frost Productions. Yes! I forgot about that. It was a silent ending. It was silent. And then then that's it. The end of... Or is it dot, 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 question mark? The end. Yeah. It is quite the crazy. Yeah. That was, that was something else. So we have, we have another cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Another cliffhanger. They did it again. And it's not just a cliffhanger. This is, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is, we didn't even know this cliff existed until we were hanging off of it. Right. This is so, this is just total like the original cliffhanger from the original series where Cooper be, looks in the mirror and sees himself as Bob. We were mm-hmm. just angry because we're like, no, this you know, like this can't no! happen. This can't happen yeah. to our hero. Mm-hmm. And then that's obviously that anger lasted twenty five years because yes, it did. We wouldn't let it go. We get the new series, and then now we have this, and now we're like, wait. You can't leave it here. She just found out she's Laura again. What? I, we, Cooper it, doesn't know what year it is. We don't know where we are. We have no idea what's going on. And this is, like I said, like I said last week, we we've got all these closed, unanswered questions. So yeah. we got all the worms back in the can, and then we opened a case of worms. Right. And we have no idea what's going on. What happened to Diane? Right. Who is Richard? Who got shot yep. in Harry's house? And 
has Carrie been? We have another mystery, essentially. Right, right. Is mi- Carrie a Laura Tulpa to try and hide Laura? Right. And if so, where's Laura? If so, where's Laura? Because she's been ripped out of the lodge. Right. We don't know where she went. We we don't know where she went. Yeah. I mean, what the... And how did Cooper know where to find her? Seriously. How did he know when he walked into Judy's coffee shop to ask for another waitress? And... Now I could could throw it. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe that's what Laura whispered into his ear. Possibly, but why did he... Like, this is how you find me? Maybe, maybe. But again, you know, it, he did just look so... Shaken. Maybe I'm, reading, maybe I'm reading too much into facial yeah. expression, but he looked... He didn't look as though he was expecting to find Judy's coffee shop. Right. He just drove past it and thought, huh, well, all right. Um, and that's... I, I the, the, this is this was me the night yeah. this aired. I watched this. My friend Mike was here, and we watched this like three times because it got repeated. Right. And you just what you just watched each re airing so, back to back so to back. We just, right. We just sat and talked through the second airing of it. Right. And then when it started over again, he's like, I got to go home. Like, yeah, I got to go to bed, but I still watched it again. <laughs> and, you know, and we were. I would probably you know, have been the same way had I been oh in the country, gosh. country to watch it. That's right. And we were going back and forth between old episodes saying, hey, was this the same as this thing and blah, blah, blah. Because um, initially I wasn't sure if it had been the same song. I'm like, I think that's the same song from episode eight. So. Yep. We was. checked that out and we looked at some other things and we were just, we were just. You're you know, probably like, why, where, why isn't Charles here to watch this with me? So we could talk right? about it. <laughs> Our chins were on the floor. We were like, ah, what in the heck just happened? So the more I start thinking about it, the more I just think I got to, this, you got to let this go. Yeah. Because there's nothing that, like I've said about David Lynch, a lot of times with David Lynch, all you're supposed to do is remember something for later. Right. And, you know, that's, that's where Chalfont and Mrs. Tremont came in. You know, that's, yep. this was another, like him drawing from the past to tell this mm-hmm. final story, at least this final chapter. Right. And now it, it, it just seems readily apparent that Lynch loves for the mystery to continue. Mm hmm. He doesn't oh, yeah. want it to end. He doesn't want it to end. And if he's going to like wrap things up, he wants to start another mystery. Like he's like, you know, okay, maybe if I get back to it, I can talk about this. Yeah. And if yeah. I don't, no big deal. We'll just leave it hanging. We'll just leave it hanging. We'll do what we do. Right. There's and yeah, everybody it's... else is just going crazy going Oh, you got to deal with this. We have all lost our collective minds <laughs> watching this. Again. Because, oh my God, what happened? It happened again. He, I it, knew he was going to do it to us again. It happened again. I knew he was going to do it to us again. I had no idea the scope. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you could have never seen this coming. Well, yeah. Right? right? I, could, no, absolutely who, not. Who could have predicted this? I can't not do this is, this is beyond anything I would have expected. And if, if you, if you say, okay, yeah, I totally saw this coming. You're completely lying 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 out of your ass because yeah, there's no way you could have seen this coming. No, absolutely. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care how an astute twin peaks viewer you are. There's no way you could have seen this coming. This is all new stuff. This is all new stuff. I mean, you and I are both pros at this. At, at Twin Peaks, it's safe to say, I would think. Yeah, it's, well, we certainly we certainly have the hours in. That's for exactly. sure. Exactly, we've we've invested. Yeah, I like to think we're, we're pretty good authorities on Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. Neither of us saw this coming. Neither of us saw this coming, and neither of us have any idea where this is going to go. Yeah. If it's going to go anywhere, what the heck? Yeah. I mean, all I know is the final dossier is going to be very popular with Twin Peaks fans. Oh my goodness! Yes, I'm glad mine's pre-ordered, so I don't have to go looking for it. In I'm a hoping store. it'll be like um, 
like uh, the Secret History of Twin Peaks was, where they kind of released it about a day early over at Barnes and Noble, and I can f- snag it there. Fingers, oh, fingers crossed. That's what I All did. Right. So I got to jump on everybody because I went to the Barnes and Noble the day before. Nice. I went to the Amazon yeah. and did the pre-order to make sure that I got it. So yeah, it might all depend on when they ship it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, now, regardless, yeah. when I do get it, I don't have to put on shoes or pants to there find it. So. There you go. That's always a plus in my book. Yeah. So, yeah, but holy crap. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what? <laughs> a... <sighs> so, so to be continued on that front, uh, what, five weeks from now? Yeah, something Halloween, baby. Yep. It's coming. Yep. So, so the question, of course, well, first, before we talk about that, what's your rating for this one, this final episode? Oh, my goodness. Uh, this one for me, boy, See, I'm waffling. Yeah. I'm waffling between accepting yeah. the fact that this was brilliant and letting go of how pissed off I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, knocked, I knocked off a point. But I'll tell you why later. Um, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to accept. Yeah. My anger and confusion. Okay. And the brilliance at the same time. Search your feelings. You know it'd be Search true. Search my feelings. Search my feelings. Um, and also, uh, because um, part seventeen, I did give nine out of ten. Yeah. Because of the lack of resolution for Audrey Horn. Right. Which was very upsetting to me, and this episode kind of you know put some salt in that wound a little bit <laughs> yeah. with the little girl who lives down the lane right so and uh, let, let's come back to that after i give my rating so okay. this okay. this gets this gets a nine out of ten deep fried gun i was deep fried gun i was considering yeah. that one i was considering that one but i'm glad i left that one go uh we're in sync this last time on this uh i give it nine out of ten Darkened Double R Diners. Oh, that's a good one. It's very alliterative, isn't it? Yes. So, yeah, Darkened Double R Diners. Now, I took off the point, like I said. Uh, I took it off for the driving scenes because we didn't. Mm, yeah. It's 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 kind of like it was just, yeah, it was better than watching someone sweep uh, the roadhouse with a broom, but not by much. <laughs> not by much. <laughs> not no. by much. Oh my God! The sleeping. That those scenes could have easily been chopped down by oh, five seriously. minutes at least. We could have had five seriously. minutes of actual answering of questions. Well, I was or, watching or added mystery. But, added something, just something besides just, driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was watching some some of the earlier episodes again. Just just to sort of look for some things. And, and I realize that once you've been through it, yes, some of those scenes are that seem to take forever. Yeah. Are a little less grating because you know, where you know where you end. Right. You know, so you're not as like, come on. So the, the sweeping is kind of funny, but it does get kind of old after a while. Aggravating. It, yeah, it does get a little aggravating and old, and then. Um, well, as far as I'm concerned, it, it can't it can't be any worse than in the original series when you had that old man shuffling across the bank. You know, right? <laughs> you know the one I'm talking about where he. Oh yeah. Goes over to Audrey, then shuffles on back. Yep. Yeah. So I and or I was watching this scene where Doctor Jacoby is getting his first delivery of shovels. Yeah. And. Because I know what's going to happen there, that scene is just hilarious now. Right. Just now that you know that Dr. Jacoby is, you know, just kind of out in the woods doing his YouTube video blog. <laughs> yeah, you know his, where it, you know where it leads. So there, you know where it leads. So it's, it's, it's hilarious. Not, it's not as confusing, obviously, this time because you know where it's going to end up. Right. It's not as confusing, and you're not as impatient right. waiting for a resolution about this. And you and, just and you just want to get to the Jerry Horn scenes. You just want to get to the Jerry Horn <laughs> scenes. Yeah, exactly. You didn't think you would want that, but you, but by God, this, there was you couldn't have too much Jerry Horn in this series. So, okay, back. Yes, yes, do it, do uh, it. It's not working. 
Why is it not oh, working? Come on. Why you no work? Oh, I see. That would be why. There we go. All right. Now they've built up the suspense too much. We all know what it is. I think I'm high! <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Back to Audrey Horn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? And the little girl who lives down the lane. Right. Who's dead? Who's dead and we don't know it? That's, that's what I keep coming back to with the little girl who lives down the lane. But at the same time, is the little girl who lives down the lane, again, going we back talk, to we, the... Yeah, we kind of talked about this before. Going back to the, to, to the movie. Um, not only is she living with her dead father and pretending that he's not dead so that no one comes and takes her away. Right. Her father has taken her to this isolated island community to hide her from her mother because her mother's crazy and abusive. Mm. So when it comes to that story, is it important that somebody has hidden someone or that somebody's dead and we don't know it? And maybe ben, Co- did, did Ben hide her? That's the thing. Or is Cooper dead and we don't know it, but he's somehow hidden Laura in this other entity, this other existence, this other life. Oh, you think Laura's the little girl who lived down the lane? That's, see, that's what I don't get. It's because, you know, Audrey starts talking about the little girl who lives down the lane, but the arm talks about it as well. Yeah. And the arm doesn't necessarily know Audrey. Right. There's no connection between the arm and Audrey, as far as we know. Yeah. As so, far is, so, as I is, know so is the arm talking about somebody else? Is your, your, what you're wondering? Right. That's the thing I don't quite get. You know, is the, is there something that the arm knows about Laura that we don't know, or there, or something about, about what's going on? I don't, I don't know. We're gonna I, I mean, de- I just, you know, we're going to be debating this for decades. For decades. Yeah. Until so, we, unless we get something else to explain this. Unless the final dossier gives us something. Yeah, we don't even know what we're going to get out of that. We don't, right, we don't know what we're going to get from the final dossier. The final dossier could be something completely unrelated because it could be Tammy Preston again. Right. Who doesn't know any of this. So. Well, uh, she, well remember, she was in the. In the secret history of Twin Peaks, Tammy did receive the dossier, mm-hmm. Major Briggs's dossier. Right, she so, received Major so, Briggs's dossier. So but does she kind of take it from. take it up from there and finish it? Yeah, that's I. I have no idea how that's going to work. Does, or does Gordon write the final dossier? Hmm. Good question. Because remember, Gordon's supposed to remember. That's right. Yes, Gordon is supposed to remember. Hmm. So many questions. Hmm. This is this is very. Well, I guess we're going to have to figure mm. this out. All these answers out together. Presumably, think... as we continue our Ghostwood journey. Yes, as we continue our Ghostwood journey, absolutely. Because yeah. it sounds like uh, we're going to have some things to talk about still. Yeah, there's a lot to speculate. There's a lot to talk about. And frankly, if there was so much from Fire Walk With Me, we're definitely going to need to talk about Fire Walk With Me some more. Right. Which we talked and about like going through the um, Criterion edition. The Criterion release, yes. Yeah, so that would be a good excuse, I think, to go through that. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, but what else should, you know, I feel like we should re-examine everything we know up to this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's what I was wondering, um, you know, for for next time on Ghostwood, mm-hmm. that we did talk about that we wanted to um, review the soundtracks. Yes, we did. So do we want to listen to the sounds? Or we do listen we, to the sounds. Or do you want to do something else next time? Let's listen to the sounds. Okay, this might be a fresh break. Give us time to yeah. process a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Give us a little bit more, a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a break from, you know, the you know, just give our gerbils a rest. Yeah, you know? exactly. 
the gerbils in our brains are, there you, go. you know, they're not just the, the wheels coming off and yeah. the wheels coming off and they're just sitting in the corner crying. <laughs> I think at this point, no it's, mas, uh, no mas. Please, yep. I can't, I can't handle any more Twin Peaks. Just give me some more cheese. <laughs> All right, so what, so why don't we do that then? Why don't we? All right, so next time we're gonna we'll talk about um, the new Twin Peaks soundtrack and score albums. Yes, let's talk about those. Let's talk about those because there's some damn good music and hot in this in the return. Yep, and uh, and I'm really looking forward to talking about this with you because I know what a music buff you are, a music mm-hmm. aficionado. Music buff and soundtrack buff specifically so, too. So yeah, so I'm I'm really curious. I think you're gonna have, bring a lot to the table, obviously. So definitely looking forward to that. So yeah, let's let's listen to the sounds. So that's what we're gonna do next. Listen time. to the sounds. And uh, now we're probably since we don't have a show to review anymore. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna drop back down to like a biweekly schedule, or how do, how often do you want to carry this on? I think now that we don't have a weekly show, we can go back to a bi-weekly schedule. Okay. Um, That way we have time to, you know, read books and watch criterion editions and. Yeah. That might, that might open up the schedule a little bit better. Yes, I think so. All right. And then dig into the stuff a little deeper. Exactly. All right. All right. So, so how about, uh, I know we just picked up a whole bunch of new people, but uh, how about we just pick up in a couple weeks with Ghostwood Mm -hmm. and uh, everybody come on back because yeah, we're going to listen to the sounds and get some nice music and kick back. And so we'll listen to, Oh, Hey, the platters as we talked about, or, you know, that the uh, chromatic. Yeah. Johnny jewel. And, Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. Obviously, and the nine inch nails. <laughs> what and what? The nine inch nails. The the nine inch nails. Yeah, nine the, the inch definite nails. article, you might say. Yep. So, and uh, of course, the uh, the MC at the Roadhouse's favorite band, ZZ Top. So, yes, ZZ Top. <laughs> Who, by the way, are coming to Columbus? Are they? Yes, they are. I, they're going to the, rock ne- the palace down. I've never seen them live. I would love. To I be haven't there. either, and I'm extremely tempted to go. Yeah, but I think they're here when I'm not here, or something like that. Uh, of, so. course, of course, of course. Yep. All right, so uh, so yeah, we'll pick back up in a couple weeks, guys. So um, in the meantime, if you want to uh, drop us a line, let us know what you thought of the finale, or at least you want to explain it to us, because God knows we need your help. Please, theories, give us. Give us theories. Yeah, give us something here. Give us something to go on. Uh, oh, yeah. Drop us a line at Ghostwoodcast on the Twitter machine or email us at ghostwoodpodcast at gmail.com. It's dot com. And, uh, <laughs> or you could uh, like us on our Facebook page, Ghostwood the Twin Peaks Podcast. And cheers again to everybody that's uh, added us and liked us on Facebook. Thanks, everybody. Welcome and Hope you enjoy our little podcast here. Yes. What? What? So our new, all, all of our new friends, they have what, like twenty-one episodes to catch up on. So yeah. you got some time. We, hey, we're you gonna give you, time, yeah. we're gonna give you a little couple week break here. So yeah, you know, give yes, you time to catch are. up. Uh, just as we kind of uh, before we start digging into other stuff, um, because hey, we still have a lot to talk about, obviously. And, sure, if we got a lot to talk about. God we can talk we, about Twin Peaks forever. And God so. knows we can, because, hey, look how long we talked in this episode. So, uh, Zayn, mm-hmm. where can they reach you on the interwebs? Well, I'm on Twitter and uh, Instagram as Udenax19. Right. And I'm on Facebook as Zan Sprouse. Excellent. And uh, if you want to come see me in person, I will be at uh, be hanging out with uh, Chris Sprouse at the... Uh, oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy at the uh, Comic Crossroads Ooh. this weekend. But we might not. I don't think we're going to get released before that happens. So really, yeah, yeah. the odds are pretty that's, slim. Yeah, yeah, that's an that's that's this weekend. Well, hopefully you attended so that yeah. Yes, I'd try to head over there just so I could see you in person because I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, and you haven't seen me in eighteen episodes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Since the, since the premiere, that's right. Exactly. Because somebody had to go to Scotland. <sighs> I know, right. <laughs> 
It was like this. I mean, if there was anything that could make me that is a total that is a total first world problem, isn't it? Total first world problem. And if there's anything that could make me not jealous about you going to Scotland, it's the fact that I got to watch the finale of Twin Peaks and you didn't. Yes, you did. You got to see it before me. So yes, so we we both. You you were kind enough to offer though. You you were willing to Skype it to me. I was willing to Skype it. Yeah, but but I wanted to see it properly. I didn't want to see it over a little tiny phone. And yeah, well, can't say I blame you. So, especially something that big. So, yeah. But, uh, exactly. So I was patient and I waited. But Good for you. Worth the wait, though. Um, okay. As for me, at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine and at Charles Skaggs on the Instagrams. Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus. Facebook at Charles Skaggs. And, of course, my blog, Geeky Things. Where's it here? Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good coffee and hot, where I talk about Ghostwood and Twin Peaks and all kinds of comics and sci-fi goodness. Uh, just recently posted my thoughts on the very first Star Trek Discovery episode. Oh, yeah. How was that? So uh, that was interesting. Uh, not perfect. But, uh, no, you know, but, also, but, but, but not you know, horrible either. So, you know, there's also not easy to come by. <laughs> not, not easy. Well, the first episode was easy to come by. The second episode took a little creative thinking on my part. Let's just say. Well, the first episode, I don't, uh, I have um, AT&T U-verse. So yeah. I apparently don't have CBS at all anymore. Really? Yeah, I did. I have no idea when this happened. That shows you how often. Oh, I remember I- hearing something about that, that like direct TV was. Like fighting yeah. with with um, CBS. Yep. So I yeah. did not see the first episode because I don't have CBS, and like I said, I have no idea when that happened, which just shows you how little you I watch, watch CBS. CBS. Yeah. Now that now that Dan Rather is retired, what is the point of watching CBS? I don't watch CBS anymore. Ever since uh, they took off Supergirl. So. Oh, was that CBS? I forgot about that. that. Was the first season, yeah. Then it moved over yeah. to CW. Mm-hmm. So that was the last time I watched CBS until Star Trek Discovery. Right. So, you know, I'll probably wind up doing the um, CBS Go or CBS Now or whatever they're calling it. Yeah, but CBS All Access. CBS All Access, yeah. yeah, but, yeah. The you know. C- CBS The Cash Grab. CBS The Cash Grab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because, hey, you know, shell out six bucks a month for one show and we're going to have commercials unless you pay ten bucks. Ten bucks a month. Yeah. So at this point, it's almost worth it to just wait for the DVD or Blu-ray to pretty come much, out of the season. Pretty much. That, so, pretty much, um, yep. I feel bad for uh, the cast and Jason Isaacs, but yeah, um, I think this is a bad move on CBS's part. It's, it's, not, really it's not very well thought out. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, well, I'm thinking, it, thank God CBS wasn't running Twin Peaks again. I know, right? Yeah. I, well, that was ABC. That was ABC. But yeah, thank God they didn't run Twin Peaks because I would have, you know, I would have paid well, it. Well, I, I, thought, I thought didn't uh, CBS have the video rights, the home video rights? I thought. I think they did. Yeah, yeah they I think did. they did. So, yeah, that could have been. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But they, I mean, that's they, the thing. They, it's, glad glad uh, David Lynch went to Showtime. Oh, seriously. And for more reasons than just boobies. But uh, <laughs> Exactly. Um. There, there's been a lot of talk on the internet about like, why would I, you know, personally, I, and I think I said this to you, Charles, that, you know, yeah. you know, I'm old. So I'm thinking like, why would I pay for network television? Right. I mean, this just seems weird to me, but, um, and then, and then I tried to explain it. Well, you know, Hey, you know, people think satellite radio is weird. And... But with satellite radio, you get like, what's satellite radio, like $11 a month and you get like hundreds of channels yeah yeah exactly you know? and, and i think this is where cbs failed was that mm-hmm. um if they had offered you know more like if right. they had, if they had more content um <laughs> but they didn't they just had their old library of shows right. that people have already watched and then here's this new thing and just this mm-hmm. one new thing right this this one new thing i mean for me it's not like ne- it's not like Netflix because I didn't jump on Netflix right away either, but then Netflix kind of built up their their library with like you know shows of like House mm-hmm. of Cards and then they got Stranger Things. Oh, and I've had I've had Netflix for like a decade, over yeah. a decade, yeah. because you know getting the you know once once video stores started to go the way of the dodo, you know I have I still have the Netflix option where you can get DVDs. 
Right. You know, I've got DVDs sitting here that I really should be watching. They've been here for a really long time. So <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, the, I know the feeling. So, you know, I still do that, but that's like what, $20 a month. And I get like literally thousands of movies if I want them. Right. Um, same thing with HBO go. There's more content on HBO. You know, I, I have HBO through my cable provider, but if I were to do HBO now, again, that's like 10, $15 a month, something like that. And you get a lot more than I think you get with the CDS thing. Yeah. And the idea that they're not seriously there, you know, I, I love Stephen Colbert, but, um, there's no Letterman anymore, so <laughs> you know this is just a Star Trek thing for me. It's like I'm not going to be watching Young Sheldon for God's sake. No, you know? no, no, no. I've no, I, no. Yeah, I'd, I'd boycott the Big Bang Theory on general principle alone. I have so many personal reasons for disliking the Big Bang Theory. Yep. You know, I started out. I mean, it started out okay, but no, uh-uh. yeah. they they burn their bridges with me pretty quickly. Yeah. So, All right. um. But yeah, that's 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 a weird thing. I'm just glad that uh, glad my cable provider carried Showtime. That's we'll <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So again, we're gonna listen to some tunes next week or next time. Next Here, time, two weeks. Two weeks from now. Two. Yeah. So two weeks. Come on back, and uh, we'll be here, and we're gonna talk about uh, the soundtrack and the scores that just came out. So go listen to those. Come on back, and uh, we'll see you next time right here on Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast. Bye, everybody.